Good morning, Triton, and welcome to the very first episode of VTV for this school year. VTV is Triton's very own student news and entertainment show, which is produced each week by those of us in the TV production classes. So, Tessa, what was your first real job? My first real job had to be babysitting, like, 10-month-year-olds and up, so it was pretty hard. How about you? Um, I've been pretty much unemployed for my whole life. I'm not even joking. I will play violin for you if you feed me. Please, I'll, I'll take anything. Mackenzie Silverstein asked some of you about your first jobs. Here's what you had to say. I was about 12 years old when I had my first job, and my first job was lawn mowing. By the time students enter their freshman year, they are now legally old enough to enter the workforce. Triton students have a lot of different jobs in the community, and we found out where they work and what they do. I babysat, and I was 11. Well, when I was 14, um, I decided that I needed to start working because my parents wouldn't give me money for things, so I started working at a dry cleaners. I worked for my Uncle Charlie, and I got paid about $12 an hour. Uh, I worked for my mom and her friend, because they have little children, and I made like $7 an hour. I think I made minimum wage, and I worked for uh, the lady who owned the dry cleaner. The benefit of having a job is that you can have your own money, and you don't have to ask your parents for money. I get to use my own money and buy whatever I want. It gets you ready for adult life, and... Um, Learn, getting your own money, um, learning how to deal with your own money, and learning how to spend things and save and all that stuff. There's tons of benefits to having a job. You're going to have to work the rest of your life, so you might as well start at some point. <laughs> Though entry-level jobs are not high-paying jobs, what they do provide is a sense of independence for the student and experience of what the real world is going to be after graduation. VTV is looking for students or adults interested in being play-by-play -play commentators during tapings of upcoming sporting events. Second and ten. North Reading adjusting. Inside zone again. Brad Whitman breaks free. He's free 40 down to the 30. Looks like he's going to go all the way showing great speed. Again, another great fate on the inside zone by Brad Whitman. And Triton takes an early six to nothing lead. Here's your chance to channel your inner Al Michaels or Brent Musburger and help us get more Triton games on cable TV and streaming online. We're looking for anyone who is knowledgeable about sports and would be willing to describe the action during a game. If that's you, please contact us here at VTV by sending us a message on Facebook. You can find our page by searching for Triton VTV. Up next, Austin Pasek takes us on our tour down memory lane and shows us what Triton looked like in the old days. Hello, I'm Austin Pasek, and today I'm here to talk to you about the history of Triton. Now some of you may be wondering what, when Triton first opened and what was it like back in that time. And now I have the answers to your questions. Come along as we go back in time, back to when Triton first opened 44 years ago. First off, here is the land of Willowcroft Farm, the land in Newbury many years ago before Triton was first built. Back in that time, this was farmland until one day it was sold. The construction of Triton was completed on February 6, 1969. And this is what the building looked like originally. Both the middle school and the high school were connected, but in the 2000s, the schools were separated. Now. This is a familiar spot. It's one of the courtyards in the high school building. But there are so many of them, and it's hard to tell which one it is. But I believe that some of you might recognize it. Triumph first opened in the 1970s, and things were a lot different back in that time. Some of the technology that we have today wasn't invented yet. And finally, here is a picture of the very first class of Triton in the year of 1970 and as you can see around them the building and a lot of the other attractions were a lot different than what they are now but as the years passed by things started to change and now it's time for us to go back to the present the year of 2014 here we go back to our time 
I hope that you've enjoyed all the history that I have shown you today. And I believe it brings back memories for some of the teachers, especially for the ones who have graduated from here many years ago. For VTV and Moss and Hattic, thanks for watching. I am Decca. I'm innovative. I am driven. I am involved. I am a student. I am connected. I am a leader. DECA allows you to be professionally prepared. You get an experience in high school that's like you're in an actual job. We have study sessions in our chapter, seeing really what goes into the competitions and preparation for the students. We all want to get to ICDC. We're going to have this amazing experience. We're going to learn different aspects of the business world. And on top of that, we're going to make memories that will last a lifetime. I am motivated. I am prepared. I am ready. It's just amazing to know that you're there for DECA. We have 200,000 members. We're continuing to grow. No matter where you go in the world, there's always people that are ready to help. When we want to go for further help, our advisor is the number one person. DECA competitive events are things that happen in real life. You have the eligibility for scholarships and internships of that type. When I go into interviews, I have a new level of confidence that I would not have been able to attain without DECA. I am confident. I am strong. I am experienced. I am an entrepreneur. This atmosphere is absolutely electric. It's fun to be around people who are striving for the same goal as you. DECA allows you to build a bond with the people you meet. I can reach more people, I can reach more places, I can use business to change the world. This truly is a life-changing organization. I am excited. I am on the road. I am ready to see the world. I am networked. I am a volunteer. I am inspired. I am groundbreaking. I am a competitor. I am a winner. I am a champion. so happy, you're so excited. You grab that trophy, you step up onto that podium, looking out at 16,000 members. We're all cheering for the same thing. We're cheering for ourselves. We're cheering for DECA. I am proud. I am DECA. Come out and support our football team tomorrow night as they take on rival Newburyport. The game is at New Report and it starts at 7 p.m. Dress warm and bring your favorite warm beverage because it's forecasted to be a little bit chilly. Speaking of warm beverages, I can't help but notice lately how many of our students are walking the halls before first period sipping on Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yeah, ever since that rule changed last year, making it completely legal for students to have coffee in school, tons of you have taken advantage of it. But how much do you really know about that cup of joe? that nectar of the gods. In our final segment, Sarah over here did a little research to find out more. Tell me this isn't familiar. You wake up for school on the later side and rush to get yourself together. But there is one thing you wouldn't dream of forgetting. Something that if you didn't get, would ruin your entire day. Coffee. But for something so familiar in the everyday student's life, do you actually know what coffee is? 
ask yourself a few questions. Three times or four times a week? Uh, probably every other day. Probably a few times a week. Well, in the morning it helps with waking me up. Uh, I really like warm drinks. Staying focused and like getting me like hyper, but during the day if I get it, it's just because coffee tastes good. Somewhere over probably like across the ocean. <laughs> I feel like I should know this. Columbia, maybe? I don't know, aren't they just like beans of coffee? Um, they're like from a tree. Fruit of a bush or a tree, I think. Okay, so from the interviews, nobody really knows what happens to coffee before it gets into your cup. So, let's start from the seed. So coffee is planted for three to four years until it bears fruit. The fruit is called the coffee cherry and is deep red when ripe. They're picked by machine or hand and exported to processing. Coffee cherries are then dried in the sun, polished, grated, and sorted. All defective beans are removed and exported to a taster who determines if they're ready or not. Then, if ready, it finally reaches us. But is coffee considered a drug? And surprisingly, it is. Drugs have two qualifications. One, they're addictive, and two, they have withdrawal symptoms. Coffee has both. Like drugs, there are people who overdose, and for those who do, have tiredness, headaches, nausea, and dull muscle pains. But fear not, coffee drinkers. The average person would have to drink 70 cups of coffee all at once in order to die of an overdose, which is pretty much impossible for any human to hold down. Plus, caffeine is much easier to quit. After 7 to 12 days of stopping, all side effects disappear. We just don't think of coffee as a drug because, well, it's so accepted in society nowadays. So the next time you pick up a coffee cup, think before you drink. Well, thanks for watching our show. And thanks to the teachers for taking the time out of their classes to show it. For VTV, I'm Sarah. And I'm Tessa. See you next time. Help, I'm being blackmailed. VTV is looking for students or adults. You can take my place if you want to sound professional. Contact us here at VTV by sending up a blah. Al Michaels or Brent Mushberger. Mushberger. Are there going to be bloopers right. like last year? Who was that? In our Sorry. first segment, Sarah Magicomo. That's me! <laughs> Sarah over here did a little research. Oh my god, I can't say that word. Can't do it. Got it, got it, got it. Well, thanks for watching the show. Yeah. And I want to die. Ciao, Bella. Yeah. Boom!